Good afternoon, everybody, and a massively warm welcome to the Kumo TCR World Tour and TCR Europe here at the Hungaro Ring for round seven as what have been an incredibly exciting racing season so far to date. As we approach the halfway mark of the TCR Europe campaign and the last of the European adventures for the Kumo TCR World Tour, the pressure is very firmly on our drivers at this tight, twisting and technical Hungarian circuit. And some of those drivers we're going to speak to with Fabio Ravioli down on pit lane right now. <laughs> Welcome to the starting grid of the Hungaro Ring. We are about to start for the first race. Behind me, you see the cars on the grid. And let's go to here what the second on the starting grid, Nestor Girolami, says. Nestor. Hey, Nestor, uh, you're sitting on the front row of the grid. How do you feel? Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, the car were, was really competitive during the qualifying, so, yeah, we have a good opportunity. It's important to score points for us. And the car develop is going in the right direction. Uh, every race we feel a little bit more competitive. So, yeah, happy again to be here, and I hope we have a good race. I hope you have a good start, better than Vallelunga. Yeah, for sure. We try our best. Good luck then. Thank you very much. And now let's try to speak to the pole sitter, Jan Erlache of Cyan Racing in his Lincoln Code 03. Ian, so. Another pole position after Spa. In that occasion, you managed to convert it to a race win. I believe the strategy is the same. Yeah, of course. It's always good, you know, to, to put the car, uh, the car on pole position. Uh, especially here, it's quite a difficult track uh, to do no mistakes and stuff. So quite happy about the job the team has done and, uh, and what we've done behind the wheel. Uh, we scored some good points this morning with the quali, but now uh, the most important is, is coming right now. So, of course, strategy is like trying to get a good start, uh, staying ahead of, uh, of Nestor, and then, uh, then we see what the laps, the laps brings, but uh, we will need to take care of the tyres. Thank you very much and good luck. Good stuff there. Thank you very much, Fabio, for some insight from our front row of the grid here at the Hungaro Ring. And I spoke to Jan Elishe a little bit after qualification. He is incredibly confident in what that Lincoln Co. Cyan racing car can do this weekend. He fancies his chances of not only a good race, but converting that into the victory at the chequered flag. One man he's going to need to watch out for, though, is Nesta Girolami, the Honda Civic has not been as successful, I think it's fair to say, as they would have hoped at this early stage of the championship campaign. It's a brand new car, of course, the 2023. The type R FL5 TCR is very much under development. It's very much progressing as the season unfolds. And Girolami, with his best outright qualification session of the year in the Kumo TCR World Tour, will be looking to maximise that opportunity and make up for, as Fabio mentioned on the grid, what was a terribly distressing Valley Lunga weekend where anything that could have gone wrong for Bebu Girolami very much did in those opening laps. That will be at the back of his mind, but a professional racing driver that has achieved what Nestor Girolami has achieved during his career will very quickly put that to bed. And this is the best opportunity possible to get himself some redemption straight away before the Kubo TCR World Tour takes a bit of a hiatus on our way to Uruguay, where we return on the 18th to the 20th of August. Another driver that we just saw there, Marchingua, had a difficult Valley Lunga last time out, Mikel Athcona. Another driver at the sharp end of the grid, but eventually lost out or gave position away 
at the chequered flag to teammate Novi Michalic. Michalic driving at home will be looking to provide a performance for the home crowd. It's been incredible to see the number of people here this weekend. They've followed Novi Michalic around. The atmosphere has been absolutely electric in TCR Europe and the Kumo TCR World Tour. We had a, an autograph session a little bit earlier on today and the queues of people waiting to get to the drivers and have their piece of paper or memorabilia signed was absolutely <laughs> fabulous to see. And there is no surprise whatsoever that that man there, Norbert Michelitz, the home hero, is the man that everybody alongside Levente Lasanche has come to see here in Hungary today, to see how he performs amongst some of the best tin top touring car drivers in the world. So a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Novi Michelitz, but he should have the strength and the performance delivered from that partisan crowd, the cheering constantly wherever he goes, hopefully will lift his performance and give him an opportunity to fight at the sharp end of the field. Now, of course, our pole man, Jan Elishe, drives the uh, Lincoln Co. Cyan racing car. This is also a Lincoln Co. driven by Victor Anderson and the MAGP team, but this is the Generation 1 car. So a well-sorted touring car, for sure, and one that has been incredibly successful, but is now a generation behind the latest Cyan Blue cars that you see at the front of the field. Anderson did an incredible job, it has to be said, during qualification to get that car as the fastest of the World Tour, uh, sorry, as fastest of TCI Europe drivers, and seventh overall on the grid. Anderson's had an up and down season. It's his first year in touring car racing, having migrated from the world of USF 2000 over in the United States, showing incredible performance, a small family run team and seventh on the grid is a big opportunity for the Swedish youngster to put a big points haul against his name, not only in the World Tour, not only in the TCR rankings, but also for his main season competition in TCR Europe. He's looking to fight for the outright victory in TCR Europe this race today and then of course reverse grid an even bigger opportunity tomorrow for a big points haul ted bjork starts ninth on the grid another driver that's had a successful valley longer but maybe not quite as successful of a season as he would have been hoping for at this stage so a good opportunity to score big for ted bjork as well in the cyan lincoln co car ted Again, showing plenty of confidence, plenty of composure over the course of the weekend, but just missing in qualifying those last few tenths. But he will start, of course, on the front row of the grid tomorrow for the reverse grid. Behind that man, Dusan Borkovic. Big presence from Serbia. Serbian national television is here today as well, following every move of Dusan Borkovic as the Duke returns to TCR Europe this season. He's already had some exceptional performance, not least of which was at Poe a few weeks ago. So Borkovic looking for a strong result in race one and more to the point, converting that pole position on the reverse grid in race two into another big points haul. That's a young man that's impressed me a great deal this weekend, Ruben Volt. Just dropped to 11th position in qualification, but the first time in the Kumo TCR World Tour, driving the ALM Motorsport uh, Honda Civic for the first time this weekend, and he showed absolutely no signs of the stress and pressure, really performing at a very, very high level for a very young man. So I'm looking forward to seeing a vault can convert the pace that we've seen on a single lap into a strong race result here this afternoon. I don't know if you can hear on the broadcast, but the hooters and fans are making some noise in the grandstands. I'm just above the start finish straight grandstand here in the commentary box, and you can hear the cheering, you can hear the horns going for their man, Nobby Michelis. And let's take a look at our starting grid. Jan Alishe from Nesta Girolami is the front row of the grid. Marching Qua lines up alongside Mikel Athkona in third and fourth position. Home hero, Norbert Michelis is on fifth place, just ahead of Santiago Arutia, with the outstanding Victor Anderson in seventh, and the first at TCI Europe, alongside him. The fast started, Frederick Vervish for Come To You Audi Sport. Ninth position is Ted Bjork with him, Dusan Borkovic for company behind. Ruben Volt, that we've just been speaking about, a good 11th in qualifying, ahead of our winner last time out, Rob Huff, in the Audi, lining up 12th position. Tom Coronel, leader of TCI Europe, a disappointed 13th after qualifying. He's ahead of teammate Kobe Powell's with Kevin Chikan and John Philippi 
15th and 16th on the grid. Victor Davidovsky will start from 17th position ahead of another home driver, Levente Lasanche, in 18th place, Michael Carlson and Lewis Brown, and 19th and 20th on the grid. And then the second of the Volcano drivers, Daniel Kachenko, is 21st and last of this field for round seven of the Kumo TCR World Tour and TCR Europe at the absolutely sensational Hungaro ring, home to the Hungarian Grand Prix, home to the passionate Hungarian crowd. This is a beautiful track set in some incredible scenery, and today the scene is set for what I hope, for what I expect, will be an outstanding showcase of top-level touring car racing. Green flag has been waved now to the car start. Their formation lap led away by Jan Alishay in pole position with Mr. Giro Arme just behind Martin Gua, another one of those drivers that had himself somewhat of a nightmare, it has to be said, at the TCR Italian Festival last time out at Valle Lunga. So Martin Gua, just like Giro Arme ahead, will be looking to keep himself out of trouble in these first few laps and see if he can convert the increasing levels of pace that we've seen from the Chinese driver over the course of this race and to the checkered flag and bank himself a solid position. We looked at the onboard camera there of uh, Jan Elishe looking back at Giro Lame. That's one of four onboard cameras that we're using this weekend. Know that Michelis being another of those drivers, Bebu, Giro Lame, and Frederic Vervich. So great to have the onboard cameras, and I'm very interested to see what Fred Vervich's camera picks up because we know he's lightning fast off of the line and he's starting in eighth position. I will guarantee he doesn't cross the line at the end of the first lap in eighth place. Keep a big eye for Frederick Vervich on this opening lap. Car number 122, the Audi Sport team, come to you, machine. He'll be looking to make up some places initially off the grid and see how that unfolds for his race over the course of the next few laps. So here we go, this is your Alame through the final corner. One last opportunity to warm the tyres, warm the brakes, make sure the car is in. The optimum operating window for this run down into T1 of the Hungaro ring. Every driver on this grid knows lap one is the best opportunity to make big games, but conversely, it's the best opportunity to completely ruin your day's racing. Murray Walker once famously said, you cannot win a race at the first corner, but you can most certainly lose lose it and that will be in the mind of every single one of these 21 touring car drivers but you put a competitive driver in a touring car you have the crowds cheering and you light the lights for the start of the race common sense often goes out of the window and it's very much a scrabble every man for themselves and that's exactly what i'm expecting to see here today so do not go anywhere get comfortable get your drinks handy do not leave your screen for the next 13 laps because we're about to go touring car racing for the first time this weekend at the Hungaro ring for the TCR Europe Kumo TCR World Tour the lights are about to go out they are go now and we are racing at the Hungaro ring for round seven yellow flags in the background quickly pulled away and that's a good start for Nestle Girolami to the outside Jan Elishe immediately on the defensive does Girolami have the overlap for the run down into turn one closing 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 the door but there we see Jan Elishe hard on the brakes using the aggression and the bravery to retain that early race lead squabbling further down as we look back from our race leader Jan Elishe's car the 155 of Marching Hua in second place almost but then back down the third again as Girolami retakes that position a little kiss for shoulder and how you do Girolami pushed out wide and Marching Hua's got the elbows out but Nesta Girolami not giving up that one as a few cars run on to the outside curb Girolami Marching Hua now race side by side into the right hander Girolami has to concede the position at long last Marching Gua uses all of the racetrack and a little bit more for good measure but job done second position is Marching Gua's and now Nesta Girolami has more than his fair share of work to do to get back on terms with car number 155 Michael Arcona making a good start as well in fourth position. Nova Michelis dropped all the way down into seventh place. This is on board with Girolami now as we come through the stake in the middle of the lap. You've got to be pinpoint precise here. You need to carry the momentum through the cars. This rewards a car that has got a fine balance that is nice and neat for the driver to be precise. And in first lap, heavy fuel, cold tyres, all the rivals around you. It is an incredibly difficult predicament as Marching Gua goes on the defensive. Girolami, will he? 
may be able to cut back. Will Avcona behind try and get in this fight as well? Girolami doing one way, then the next. Doesn't find a way past the Lincoln Coat all the way around the outside. That's not going to work, Sunshine. And Mikel Avcona keeping a watching brief in the background. Fancies his opportunity to buy into this one, but all of the pressure is applied to Ma now in second position. Girolami in third place, watching, waiting. Mikel Avcona in the Hyundai trying to find a way to get on terms as well, while Jan Alishay at the front of the field serenely goes about the business of taking and extending his race lead. Little look from Girolami there, further down the running order. That is Victor Anderson on Dusan Borkovic as they go side by side. That opens the door for the continue Audi to try and find a way past as well. Borkovic has to revert to the runoff area, but gets back on to the racetrack just about. One place gained for Victor Anderson. Now fancies another place as well. That's John Philippi, the man that's left out to dry on the bright orange Lincoln Co car. Dust been kicked up at the fourth round of your shot as everybody's using all of the track and more side by side still for Philippi and Victor Anderson. Anderson now will have the inside line in the MAGP machine. Philippi trying to tough it out around the outside. Dusan Borkovic makes it three wide in contact. Dusan Borkovic and there we go. That is Victor Anderson's car. Borkovic now turned around as well. Dusan Borkovic and Victor Anderson come together. That was never going to work. Three into two just does not go. And unfortunately, Victor Anderson is the one that pays the biggest price of those three cars. Borkovic in a separate accident a few yards further up the road as well. They're going to drop down the running order and the timing streams update themselves. And while that's all happening at the front of the field, the fight continues. So let's look again there. Anderson and Borkovic side by side. Not quite sure. That's a big hit for Victor Anderson. Then Dusan Borkovic gets turned around by one of the aggressive team Italia I think that was further down the running order. I'd like to see that replay again. I'm not sure where the contact came, but here comes Nesta Girolami on the inside. Nesta Girolami, the last of the late breakers, do or die. Takes second position away. Martin Guar pushed out wide. That opens the door now for Mikel Ascona around the outside. Mikel Ascona, can he get one? Can he get two? This is fantastic racing. Ascona gets the deal done, and now he's immediately on the charge for Nesta Girolami. A change at the front of the field. Great driving from these three. And the the podium is anybody's at this stage. Alcona half defensive, half attacking to the inside of the road. Martin Guard does not know what's happened. Two cars in one corner, some aggressive driving from the Spanish driver there. Rob Huff as well using all of the racetrack, trying to find a way past a little bit further down. He's got Tom Coronel for company in the lower reaches of the top ten. But that was some exceptional overtaking for Nesta Girolami. The aggression that we're looking to see from the Argentine driver on full display. Great pass in the Honda. He's back up in a second position. In third is Mikel Athcona in fourth is Marching War. Frederick Vervich makes up two off his starting position into fifth. And home hero Norbert Mitchellis is in sixth position with three of 13 laps completed. down the running order there we see a couple of all three in fact of the aggressive team Italian cars led by Kevin Chicon, Michael Carlson and Levente Lasanche in uh, the, well I say second or third but it's 15, 16 and 17th in the field there is Ruben Volt where is he in the running order he drops to 13th position so two lost off of the start for Ruben Volt which is not a bad return considering it's his first time here in this championship so a solid start to Ruben Volt's campaign as he looks to build a experience in this championship in this car on this circuit to use to good effect hopefully for him in race two tomorrow afternoon and this is now Ruben Volt car number 127 127 three digits a world tour driver he's racing against John Philippi two digits a TCR Euro driver Philippi very much on the defensive in 12th position further up the running order there we see the charge between the Lincoln Co and the Hyundai that is Norbert Mitchell is trying to hold off Santiago Arrutia. They're racing in sixth and seventh position. Jan Elishe at the front of the field has a 2.6 second cushion over that man, Nesta Girolame, with the monster overtake just a lap or so ago. Mitchell is under big pressure coming into the braking zone into T1, has the inside line covered for Santiago Arrutia. And I'm just hearing in my ear, we're going to take a quick look at all that occurred during the start of this race. So there you see, Paul Mann. 
Jan Alishe straight to the inside line. He knows he's vulnerable coming down into T1. Covers that inside line aggressively. A Schumacher chop-esque. That doesn't deter Nesta Girolami. Looks to the outside, has the overlap at this stage, but there's just not enough room to get that door closed. And while they're squabbling, that gives the pack an opportunity. This is a better view now from the drone quickly to the inside there. Good defensive from Jan Alishe. Girolami got a better launch off the line. Victor Anderson has seen strife a little bit further down. That's going to cost him deal later on. Let's look back now at Jan Elishay. Look how quickly he covers the line there, you see. Girolami almost into the rear of the French driver's car. Great launch, but not quite enough real estate for Girolami to find a way past. They squabble down into T1. Both of them fighting for the track position they need. That allows that man, Marching Qua, in the blue car to get side by side with Girolami. This is from Frederick Verdice's view, as we see again. Mar and Girolami side by side, Askenar also interested in getting involved, but Askenar just cannot find a gap between those two squabbling TCR cars, and exactly as I said at the top of the show, the opening lap was always going to be one of the most important laps for many of these drivers, and we've got some big winners and some big losers in those opening skirmishes. Four laps in the box, just about to be five now, as Jan Alishé breaks the timing beam once again. Five of 13 laps, Jan Alishé now has a two and a half second lead at the front of the field. Pebble Girolami starting to build a bit of a cushion from uh, Mikel Athcona behind. That's good news for... Girolami. He needs to get a gap between himself and Afcona to just prevent any opportunity for a squabble and for them to start being brought in to the region of Mar and Vervich behind. Ruben Volt still very firmly had, doesn't have that luxury, Ruben Volt. He's very much in the middle of a scrap. He's currently in 13th position. John Philippi just ahead. Philippi's teammate, Victor Davidovsky, just behind. And then Kevin Chacon hanging on to the coattails of this trio of cars, waiting to see for now opportunity presents itself. Dusan Borkovic that we saw sideways a little bit earlier on is now in 17th position. Remember, Borkovic starts tomorrow in pole position. So disappointed opening few laps for the Serbian driver, but he'll recover a few positions before we get to the chequered flag, I'm absolutely sure. And one thing is for sure, Dusan Borkovic, the red mist, will descend now. He will be hungry to find a way past to make amends for the dramas that we saw a little bit earlier on. Victor Anderson is still running, but in 21st position, almost a minute behind at the back of the field. So, sadly, for Anderson, his day is pretty much done. It was a big hit to the barrier, so that car will be carrying some damage and expect to see Victor Anderson jump down pit lane before too long and see if they can affect any repairs to that one. Get everything ship shape again before we go racing tomorrow afternoon. Now, Volt looks to the inside behind him. Davidovsky goes on the defensive, doesn't fancy his chances against Kevin Chekhan's Hyundai Elantra. Chekhan uses that opportunity, though, as Davidovsky compromised on corner exit. Kevin Chekhan now to the outside line. That's not where you need to be, so the Italian will try and get the switch back, get them run into the final corner and use that all the way down. The start, finish straight. Kevin Chekhan now in the wheel tracks of Victor Davidovsky. This is a great opportunity for the aggressive team Italia, Hyundai Elantra driver, to find a way past. Victor Davidovsky in front, follow the slipstream as long as you possibly can. Is he close enough to make a move? Volt just dipping out of the slipstream of John Philippi further ahead, but Chacon not quite close enough on this occasion as Dusan Borkovic decides I'm not close enough, but I don't care. I'm going to go for it anyway, and that is a pass. Dusan Borkovic passed by Michael Carlson. Carlson on the retaliation, does not want to give this one up, but Carlson will be to the outside. Borkovic will have the inside line and the advantage. The two Hyundais side by side. Now Borkovic will run Carlson out of road on corner exit. There we go. Give each other racing room. Well done, Michael, Car Michael Carlson. Held on to that one and got the position back. So Dusan Borkovic won it, then lost it again. Good driving from Carlson. One of the most competent performances we've seen from the Swedish driver so far this season. A little bit squirrely on corner exit there for Michael Carlson, but nothing too much to worry about. He still holds track position over Dusan Borkovic, just behind. Lewis Brown moves up into 18th place to the expense of Levente Lasanche. So Lasanche now becoming detached a little bit from his uh, aggressive team Italian teammate Kevin Chacon and Michael Carlson ahead. So uh, work to do 
for Levente Levant Le Sanche. First time racing in front of the home crowd here at the Hungaro Ring. He's very excited about performing in front of his local fans, but he needs to find a little bit more pace at the moment to be comparable to where his teammates are further up the road. Riding on board now with Frederick Verwees through the penultimate corner of this Hungarian Grand Prix circuit lap. He'll use all the racetrack and immediately to the left-hand side for the swing through the final turn. Critical, that final turn, and it takes us down the back straight. And you carry the speed, you carry the lap time all the way down into T1, just as Jan Elisha is doing at the front of the field. That is Norbert Mitchell. It's now just covering the inside line, getting out of, probably, the warm air of Frederick Verwees in front. Not really attacking not really defending and that is a very sorry looking Lincoln Co for MAGP look at the damage on that one eventually a tyre deflation calls an end to his day but that is a very heavily damaged car as Dusan Borkovic round two on Michael Carlson job done again Carlson tries to repeat it on the switchback but doesn't have the run this time so that is game set and match for Dusan Borkovic a good overtake into T1 that moves the Serbian now into 16th position so good pass on Carlson there, Dusan Borkovic up one. The recovery drive continues. Good bit of driving, Carlson tried to repeat himself just like he did the previous lap, but not enough of an overlap to get alongside the number 62. So Borkovic safe for now. Next driver on the road is Kevin Chikon, car 31, another aggressive team Italian machine. So Borkovic will be keen to do something about that near two second gap he's got between himself and Chikon to continue the charge forward and get himself into the top 15, which are the points paying positions. Borkovic, the bare minimum, he'll want to come away with with this weekend, yeah, it's this race, sorry, should I say, is a points paying position and currently is one away from that slot. The difference between him and a point is Kevin Chacon, the Italian driver, new in to addressing Team Italia, came into the squad for the Valle Lunga TCR Italian Festival and stayed for the Hungaro ring, doing good work as he relearns the world of uh, the Kumo TCR World Tour and TCR Europe campaigns, holding on to 15th position, but for how long? Dusan Borkovic has intention to take that away. Crossing the line now, eight laps of 13 complete. Jan Elishe is still your race leader from Bebuja Alame with Mikel Athkona in third position. Marcin Kwa holds on to fourth place. That man, uh, Frederick Verwees, is fifth with Norbert Michelitz for company. But Michelitz has the uh, non insignificant challenge of Santiago Arutier squabbling away at the back of his car, trying to keep Michelitz nice and on his tippy toes, keep his attention. Don't let him concentrate too much on the car in front because Arutier fancies a way past. Ted Bjork, teammate of the Cyan Lincoln Co Racing Squad, is in eighth position ahead of Rob Huff with Kobe Powell's rounding out our top ten runners. In terms of TCR Europe, Kobe Powell's in tenth position is the highest runner of TCR Europe, so is in effect leading in terms of points paying positions for TCR Europe ahead of Tom Coronel, teammate Tom Coronel, with John Philippi third in Europe and twelfth overall in class. Ruben Volt, a bit of a bit of a interloper there for the World Tour in 13th position ahead of Victor Davidovsky in 14th, who's fourth in Europe. Kevin Chikon 15th, who's fifth in Europe. Dusan Borkovic 16th, sixth in Europe, and in 17th position is Michael Carlson, just ahead of Lewis Brown, Levente Lasanche, Daniel Kachenko, and then Victor Anderson, as we've seen, down pit road and sadly I think probably pretty much into retirement. Great little squabble that we're seeing now, headed up here by John Philippi, 12th position so far, Ruben Volt trying to find a way past Volt's had a uh, relatively sedate opening few laps, dropped a couple of positions from his starting place, which is to be expected relative to his experience, but now he's looking to make amends for that one, the car's back in the comfort zone, but Victor Davidovsky fancies his chances, little nibble to the rear of the Honda from Davidovsky, and now to the inside, Victor Davidovsky, last of the late breakers, really late move to the inside, through the penultimate corner, side by side with Ruben Volt. A little kiss between the two drivers as well, for good measure. Davidovsky to the outside line, not where you need to be. That allows the aggressive team Italian car and Kevin Chicon to buy into this one. And Davidovsky, from man of the moment to absolute disaster, doesn't gain a position but loses one. And then a big, big tap to the back of Chicon for good measure as they run down the start finish straight. 
And that is just the problem. In a field as tight as this one, you make a move, it doesn't happen. That opens the door for one of your rivals. And Chicon, very much on his toes there to sneak in and take advantage. So Davidovsky points for effort. Great bit of aggression to try the move there on Ruben Volt, but not quite paying off on this occasion. And now Chicon gets himself in the middle of this meaty little sandwich that we've got going on for the fight between 12th to 15th position. Let's look at that one again as we come through the final corner. Davidovsky tries to get back on the race tag. Hard tap into the rear corner of Chicon's car. Chicon actually was very, very fortunate not to be sent round into a spin or even worse into pit wall. So a little bit naughty there for me to Davidovsky. A little bit of uh, aggression that maybe is a bit too much as Davidovsky in fact has two wheels on the grass as well. So he's more trying to get himself back on the racetrack rather than anything untowards. So unfortunately, two cars in a small space together, these things do happen, but everybody survives that one. Ruben Volt now has himself a, a few, well, a second just around advantage that he's got over them, courtesy of that squabble, but he doesn't have the pace, it seems, at this moment in time, so check on. Can he get back in terms with it? Can Davidovsky stay with them and make that a three-way battle for 13th on down? As we're looking now a little bit further up the running order, that is Ruben Volt, or so saying, didn't have the pace, proves me a liar almost instantaneously with a very neat and a very clean overtake on John Philippi. Great move for 12th place and the young Estonian driver Ruben Volt in the ALM Motorsport Honda Civic immediately dispatches Frenchman John Philippi. Of course, don't forget Ruben Volt racing under the Kumo TCR World Tour, John Philippi racing in TCR Europe, so the World Tour drivers are invisible to TCR Europe points, so that'll be no big drama for John Philippi, he just needs to score big points as he's fighting currently Tom Coronel at the front of the TCR Europe campaign but the problem for Philippi is that move then puts him in contention with Kevin Chekon who is a TCR Europe driver so it's now Chekon and Philippi and Davidovsky for good measure all in the same kind of postcode looking to do something about the final three laps of this race the other Honda Civic from ALM Motorsport, run by Nestor Girolam, is having a fairly quiet end to the race in second position. Doesn't quite have the pace to go with Jan Elishe, but also has a nice and healthy advantage of just under a second from Mikel Athcona behind. Last time around, Elishe a 154.685, Girolam at a 154.528. So quicker, but it's very much a case of Elishe is managing the pace at the front of the field. He doesn't need to worry too much for two and a half seconds advantage. What does need to happen though is your alarm needs to be very aware of that BRC car behind because Mikel Athcona, this is an opportunity now for him to score big points over teammate Norbert Michelitz in this race and that will help Athcona not just now but in the entire Kumo TCR World Tour campaign to come. Because if those two drivers stay in and around the same points it makes it very difficult for Hyundai to think about favouring one or the other. Further down the running order, John Philippi loses two positions as we see a little bit of drama there. That is Kevin Chicon. That is Ruben Volt with the hazard lights on. So the Honda pulls off. The squabble now, though, is led by Chicon with Davidovsky. Round two. Here we go again. John Philippi has got dispossessed. Dropping down as well. Dusan Borkovic very quickly into this battle as well. Borkovic looks to the outside. Tries to cut to the inside. Wants the run off of the final corner for the run down the start finish straight Kevin Chacon still leading this little battle pipe at the back of it is Dusan Borkovic bright yellow highlight on his rear spoiler tells you that is the target competition car of Borkovic and he wants to move forward Davidovsky again to the outside Chacon again covering the inside line John Philippi getting the better run of all three of them through the opening turn but Victor Davidovsky has found some pace in that come to you car can he find a way past that's the big question the outside line, not the optimal place to look for an overtake. Chacon, aware of the switchback opportunity, keeps the inside line covered. And there is Ruben Volt after a, an impressive race, it has to be said. Coming down pit lane with some kind of drama, not sure what's wrong with the car. But the end result is Ruben Volt takes himself out of contention. Elisha continues at the front of the field. The pink wing mirrors is the easiest way to distinguish himself between him and his three teammates at the Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing, two and a half seconds are still the advantage over Nesta. 
Girolame and Mikel Azcona, second and third position. Marching Qua now dropping back significantly from the lead battle pack in fourth place. A boring race for Marching Qua, but good points, exactly what he needed to get on the books coming into this event following a disappointing and difficult final on the round. Frederick Verviche did move up off the start, but can only get as far as fifth position. Noah Mitchell is disappointed, I'm sure he will be, to be running in sixth place. But remember, we go again with a reverse grid tomorrow, and that's where the big opportunity lies for Norway to put a good result on in front of his home crowd. Santiago Routier, Ted Bjork, Rob Huff, Kobe Powell's round out our top ten, and Kobe Powell's remains the man that is the leader of not just the rookie classification, but also TCR Euro. So, so far, so good for Belgian driver Kobe Powell's leading TCR Europe just ahead of teammate Tom Coronel, Terry Carr, veteran, very much fan favourite Dutchman Coronel, 11th and 2nd in TCR Europe at this moment in time as they squabble between himself and teammate Powell's for the final position within the top 10 places. Rob Huff, not seen much of him so far this weekend. Ninth position, started in 12th on the grid, moved his way up to ninth, courtesy, courtesy of some astute driving and the dramas that unfolded ahead. Huff having another good points-paying opportunity, which is exactly what he needs to do, is carrying the weight thanks to the win last time out of Valley Longa. So this is very much a case of damage prevention for uh, come to you for Audi and for Hoff and so far so good mission accomplished in ninth place a solid result the second of the Audi drivers behind teammate Frederick Verviche but still good points for his overall Kumo TCR World Tour campaign now Jan Elisha though is he was quick in practice. He was lightning fast in free practice too when the rain was falling. He admitted himself it's pretty worthless driving in wet weather because that's not the conditions we expect to race in. But Jan Elisha, as soon as that car rolled off of the back of the truck, he had the sparkle in his eye, he had the hunger, and the car has been faultless this weekend. And Jan Elisha is delivering on that promise, delivering on that potential massively in this race, never really after a, a spotty opening few corners, never looked to be under pressure, and as Jan Elisha enters the final lap, he has a very healthy two and a half second lead over Nesta Girolami and Girolami himself, although not quite in contention for the race victory will be delighted with a much more straightforward drive, it has to be said, and some great points for him and his Kumo TCR World Tour there is the car with the bright yellow hand lights, uh, sorry, highlights that is Kobe Powell's current leader of TCI Europe in this race. Teammate Tom Coronel with the red highlights following in his wheel tracks behind. Coronel has been so full of praise for Kobe Powell's this year. Remember, it's Kobe's first year in car racing having moved over from the world of rallycross and he's showing such speed, composure, talent and is a thoroughly thoroughly nice guy as well so it's great to see Powell's and his learning journey continue as Kevin Chacon and Victor Davidovsky that's a fight that's not going out anytime soon that's a candle that continues to burn very brightly indeed battle for 12th position as you see on your screen Davidovsky's not given this one up yet Victor Davidovsky he had a couple of really good chances some aggressive attempts at overtaking but none have quite stuck as Kevin Chacon continues to be a thorn in the side of the Macedonian driver can Davidovsky do something about this now as we head into the final portion of the final lap here at the Hungaro race, switching back to Jan Elisha though, at the front of the field everything just looks easy when you're in the form that Jan Elisha's in and today has been absolutely no difference whatsoever as your alarm is coming under, a little bit more pressure now but no doubt managing the car to the flag so here we go then, Jan Alishe through the final corner, Nesta Girolame, Mikel Azcona behind as well. This has been the seventh round of the Kumo TCR World Tour and TCR Europe. Jan Alishe with the chequered flag takes the victory for Sayan Rich, Lincoln Co. Second place is Bebo Girolame and Mikel Azcona rounds out the podium finishers in what has been a superb, superb bit of racing at the front of the field. Fourth position goes to Marching Bois. Frederick Verviche, Noma Michelis at the line takes sixth place from Santiago Arutier, Ted Bjork, Rob Huff round out the top nine, and Kobe Powell's in tenth takes the victory for TCR Europe ahead of teammate Tom Coronel. Kevin Chacon rounds out the TCR Europe podium just 
from Victor Davidovsky. John Filippi and Dusan Borkovic crossed the line in 14th and 15th position. Good race for Michael Carlson, 16th at the flag from Lewis Brown, Levente Lasanche. Excellent learning opportunity, banked and recorded in his armory of skills in excellent place. And then Daniel Kachenko in 19th, Victor Anderson and Ruben Volt. Don't make it to the flag, courtesy of contact in the case of Anderson and some kind of unspecified mechanical issue for Ruben Volt, which forces him to end the race in the pit lane when the chequered flag falls. Great stuff from Jan Elisha, who cracks the window open, get a bit of fresh air in that car as well. It is incredibly warm here at the Hungaro ring once again as the two uh, Cyan Lincoln Co's momentarily go line astern, but that is a dominant performance from Jan Elisha. Rarely do we see large gaps at the chequered flag in these TCR class races. And Elisha, although dropping back to 2.1 at the chequered flag, managing the pace in the final lap was a good three seconds to the good at the front of the field from Bebu Giralame, who himself will, I'm sure, be absolutely delighted with what has been arguably the strongest performance yet that we've seen this season in the World Tour for the new Honda Civic Type R FL5 TCR. McLaughcona picking up some uh, marbles and debris just to make sure the car meets the ride height and meets the weight, of course, as happens in motor racing. McLaughcona had himself another good drive in third position. I think he'll be a little bit disappointed that the pace in that Hyundai Elantra wasn't quite enough to match the two front runners, but nevertheless, that's a very, very solid drive from Arthcona. Started fourth, makes up one position at the expense of Ma and gets on the bottom step of the podium. And importantly for Mikel, scores a big result versus teammate Norbert Michelis, which will bring him back into contention in the overall World Tour classification that I'm sure we'll see on our screen in a few moments' time. There is the podium set up. There are the part Ferme for the cars to go in. Underneath the podium, our top three finishers, Jan Alishé, Esther Girolame, Mikel Azcona, will line up in front of the respective number boards, get out to the applause and cheers from the crowd. I'm sure they'll not be cheering too loud because their man Norby's not there, but the Hungarians love their motor racing and they appreciate a good race when they see it, I'm absolutely sure. There's Kobe Powell's car as the winner at TCI Europe coming into the back of the shot. And here is the man of the moment. Jan Elisha, he came, he saw, he conquered in this opening race of the weekend. Massively professional, incredibly confident, never put a wheel wrong and devastatingly fast. That is a very nice performance indeed from Jan Elisha and one that I'm sure when we speak to him just after the race will be a very satisfying end result for the French driver and very much gets him on form thank you very much looks to the skies and to the crowd thumbs up and cheer big applause from the crowd here even though it's not their man no that Mitchell it's they recognize a good result and there is Girolame and Mikel Alcona just having a, a brief deep breath. let's see if we can hear what they're saying well, English speakers won't recognise what's been said there, unfortunately, much as myself, but it's great to see that they're kind of talking about what occurred during the race, and uh, hopefully it's all nice. Hopefully there was no bad language in there. I don't recognise the words that they're using, but if they were, I will apologise on their behalf. Shaking hands from uh, Jan Elisha there with teammates, friends and family as well, celebrating what's been a great victory for Lincoln Co. Cyan Racing. They're, uh, as I say, they came into this weekend with some confidence. The car's been quick in any weather conditions in the hands of Jan Elisha. No matter what the day has thrown at him, he's been incredibly competitive, and that was a, a really, really strong result. And look how hard he's worked. He's a fit young man, is Jan Elisha, a professional race driver, but he uh, looks like he's done some work there. And here are our provisional results for round seven. Jan Elisha from Nesta Girolame and Mikel Athcona, our podium. Marcin Qua, Frederick Verviche, Nobert Michelis, our four, five, and six. Santiago Arutier, Ted Bjork, Rob Huff, and Kobe Powell's round out our top ten. Kobe Powell's is the winner in TCI Europe. Tom Coronel, Kevin Chacon, Victor Davidovsky, and John Philippi. And next up, at a 15th place, Dusan Borkovic gets that final point at the line from Michael Carlson, from Lewis Brown, 
Levente Lasanche, Daniel Kachenko, and Victor Anderson, unfortunately, retired from the race with accident damage. And Ruben Volt is last in 21st position. And I think now we've got Fabio down on pit lane talking to our race winner, Jan Alashe. Jan Erlache, congratulations for the second time you converted pole position into a victory. Yeah, it was a good race. We knew the, the, the key was, was going to be the start and definitely was. We, we haven't made a, a good start. Uh, Bebu did a much better start than me, but uh, I went to the defensive line directly. I had to break a little bit late into G1 to make sure I, I get out of it um, on the lead. And then uh, it was just a matter of uh, controlling the tire, even though it looks easy from, from TV. It was like a, a proper race. Every corner is doing like, uh, doing like the job to, to save the tire in case there is a safety car later on or something. So. No, happy about the pace. Uh, the boys are working very hard on the car, you know, so as always, credit to them. Uh, I mean, uh, they give me an amazing car today from qualifying to now, so it's good points. And now we will uh, turn our, our head to tomorrow. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Good to hear Jan thanking the team there for the hard work that Cyan Racing have put in to this Lincoln Co car to get it as competitive as it really is at this stage in proceedings. And the good thing about Elishe is the more the cars develop, the Generation 2 cars develop, the more the, the opportunity for it to become faster becomes. And look there, World Tour standings, Elishe and Norbert Michelis are dead level at the top of the time. 31 points in arrears is Mikel Athcona, just ahead of our uh, spa winner, Rob Huff, with uh, Nesta Giromarme, Ted Bjork in fifth and sixth position. 68 points cover the top eight drivers. One bad weekend for any one of those drivers, and they're going to plummet down the overall point standings. And this is TCI Europe. Tom Coronel retains his championship lead from John Philippi. Kobe Powell's does himself the world of guff once again up into third position, just ahead of Dusan Borkovic. Borkovic needed that point, but he's now 95 adrift in fourth position, so work to do for Dusan and Victor Davidovsky. Good season continues, fifth overall in the TCI Europe classification, and there is Lewis Brown in sixth position for Volcano Motorsport, 128 points adrift at the top of the field. Sensational opening race of the weekend here at the Hungaro Ring. The Hungarian fans have been treated to some fantastic tin top racing. Jan Elishe started from pole position in this opening race of the campaign, immediately got defensive to the inside from Nesta Girolami. Girolami could not find a way past Dusan Borkovic, got into all sorts of strife as well with contact between himself and Victor Anderson, and further contact down the running order. Anderson had to come into retirement. There we saw Victor Davidovsky getting up close and personal with. Kevin Chicard, Mikel Athcona, good race to drop on to the podium positions in third place, but Jan Elishe at the front of the field walked away with this victory. A dominant performance for the Cyan Lincoln Co racing driver. While all the drama and all the excitement unfolded behind, Jan Elishe gave it everything he's got to make it look easy at the front of the field. And now it is time for the podium celebrations and Jan Alishe once again will step out into the baking sunshine, but he'll feel better about himself and everything this time because there is some champagne to be sprayed and some plaudits to receive from the watching and waiting crowd. Big applause from the grandstands, applause from pit lane for all the team members as well as our first drivers make their way onto the podium. And it is Mikel Athcona, third position for BRC Hyundai squad in second place, Nesta Girolami, the ALM Motorsport Honda Civic, looking more competitive than we've seen this year. And then that man, the unstoppable Jan Elishe, takes the uh, applause to the national anthems. Congratulations, guys. The trophy has been by Congratulations, indeed, as the French national anthem plays for our winning Jan Alice bringing team member up as well for the winning Cyan Lincoln Co squad as the trophies are awarded, starting with Mikel Athcona. Good result for him for the BRC Hyundai N Squadra Corsa team. 
trophy aloft, acknowledging the applause of the crowd. Nestor Girolame, second position, again, very satisfying result for Nestor in second place. And then the winner, Jan Alishe, the biggest cheer, is awarded to our race winner. Great performance as well from the team, so Sayan Lincoln Co. take their winning team's trophy. And our World Tour podium pose for the cameras to get the family photo for our podium positions, and then we'll be able to go and spray some champagne to celebrate in time on it motor racing fashion there is the champagne <laughs> lincoln co getting a face full of the fizzy as well everybody's very happy with their day's work but don't forget we do it again tomorrow morning 11 50 cest for our second and final race of the weekend so make sure that you stay tuned for that one because you know what touring car racing is like race one's good race two is almost always exceptional and i think that will be no different whatsoever here this weekend as everybody's uh, just wrapping up now a few final photographs of the Kumo TCR World Tour podium. It's very warm down there on pit lane. <laughs> Getting yourself on camera there as we see again, Jan Alishe, and beautiful drone shots at the Hungaro ring, crossing the chequered flag. Everybody's, all the fans are in the covered grandstand because it's so warm, you just don't want to be sitting out there in the sunshine. And big thumbs up, ever the gentleman, for Girolami, to his rival, Jan Alishe, to say job. Very well done indeed, Jan. Girolami gave his all, but did not quite have enough to stay in contention with the Lincoln Co car. And a great performance, though, for Honda, a great performance for the Civic. And we expect that one to continue to become stronger as the year progresses. The Honda Civic FL5 new for this season, and a car very firmly still in its early development stages. So we expect that one to be a very, very strong contender as the year progresses. Round of applause now for the crowd as we're waiting for the TCR Europe podium to jump up and receive their trophies, their celebrations at the top of the field. So here we go, TCR Europe once again, but for the final time this year, hosting the Kumo the TCR World Tour. There is Kevin Chacon, third in TCR Europe. Good result for Kevin, and only second race in the category. Tom Coronel, always delighted to take home a trophy, his second position. And then the young, the incredibly impressive and talented Kobe Powells is our TCR Europe race winner. The Conti you racing. You like that one, did Kobe Powell's? Great to see a race victory. Such a young man, such a talented young man. I've said it already, but I'm going to say it again in this broadcast. Brand new to circuit racing, having moved over from Rallycross. He's got a teammate, a legend, it has to be said, in Tom Coronel racing in the same team as him. And he's come in here and just looked like he's been doing this all his life. The race victory trophy in TCR Europe and the rookies trophy as well for Kobe Powell's. The, <laughs> the Coronel leap as well from second position. Do it a couple of times, make sure the photographers get it. No such exuberance though from Powell's on the top step of the podium. Get in there for the photos, chaps. Let's spray some champagne and let's put a pin in what's been an incredible day, as expected, of racing here at the Hungaro ring. So there are our podium for TCR Europe Champagne is about to be sprayed. Powell's a little bit, the last off the line, a bit slow. The first time I've seen him slow this weekend. Getting the bottle opened, spraying teammate Coronel, spraying Kevin Chicot as well as they celebrate a fantastic performance. A great show for the crowds, both here at the circuit and at home as well. And mark my words, folks, Kobe Powell's the name that's going to be very important at the end of touring car racing in the next few years years so great stuff and thank you all so much for watching what has been an incredible race and don't forget we're back again tomorrow on the tcr tv app and tcr tv on youtube at 11:50 cst tomorrow so from us all thanks for watching and bye bye